Do you ever hear your smartphone beeping or vibrating when it actually isn't? I do. I think my phone is vibrating when it's just me shaking my legs. Do you always check your smartphone when you have a second, like during breaks at work? Yes, I think I do that as well. We decided to check our anchor, Shinichi Takata's daily routines, when he was on standby. What's the news? Yes, he's checking his smartphone. Even during makeup. How about immediately checking stuff online? Don't you use that word? Really? He's doing that as well. Shinichi seems pretty dependent on his smartphone. But what about you? Many doctors and experts say more and more people are developing problems with their brains, all stemming from using their smartphones too much. Heavy smartphone use can cause a decline in cognitive functions, a condition also known as brain fatigue. This is an image of the brain of a person with the condition. Blue indicates areas where blood flow has weakened and functions have declined. Compared to a normal brain, the difference is clear. A memory loss clinic in central Japan. Most of the patients here used to be elderly people, but things started to change about five years ago. People in prime working age, from their 30s to 50s, now account for 40% of our patients. Fifty-nine-year-old Yoshito Tanaka was diagnosed with brain fatigue a year ago. He's the manager of a car dealership. Tanaka has been using a smartphone for eight years. He says he often checks email, social media and articles, which he thinks are useful to his job. There's lots of information online I can use during conversations and when I train my staff. I personally like having access to all this, but my doctor says it took a toll on my health without me realizing it. That was his diagnosis. The first change, forgetfulness. Tanaka couldn't remember the name of one of his staff members. Then it started happening frequently. And this is how he reacted when one of his employees made a mistake. Even a school kid wouldn't mess up like that. What kind of education did you get? Tanaka used to be good-natured, but he says he became more prone to yelling without paying attention to those around him. And surprisingly, Tanaka says he failed to notice any of these changes himself. I would say terrible things, but I wasn't aware of it. I thought I was totally normal. But my wife said something was wrong with me. Tanaka took her advice and visited Okumura's clinic. The doctor told him to start by refraining from touching his smartphone for five minutes to relax. Mm -hmm. 
Researchers have found a network in the brain that becomes active when people unwind. They call it the default mode network. It's believed to play a crucial role in organizing information. The brain processes data in three steps. The first is input. Then the data is organized by the default mode network. Finally, it's output in the form of speech and other means. When people overuse their phones instead of relaxing their brains, information isn't processed properly. The data is left in a disorganized heap. Okamoto says this affects memory and speech. People may think they're taking a break when they're on their phones, but the brain isn't relaxing. In many cases, the phones are the main factor behind exacerbated fatigue. 55-year-old Yoshiko Fujimoto also suffers from brain fatigue. She was diagnosed with breast cancer several years ago and has recently also been caring for her elderly mother. She says she was worried when she no longer felt excitement. I used to like going to the movies, but they no longer spark my interest. My heart used to pound with excitement, but no longer. I felt kind of lost. According to Okumura's diagnosis, Fujimoto's default mode network wasn't working properly. There was the risk the functionality of her frontal lobe would be diminished. The brain's frontal lobe controlled judgment, desire, and even emotion. Fujimoto was stressed out by her illness and caring for her mother. Her frontal lobe couldn't handle anything else. She says she was frequently looking up facts about breast cancer on her phone, and this may have overworked her frontal lobe. My sense of curiosity had been worn out. I didn't want to start anything new because I felt it probably wouldn't interest me. Other doctors and researchers have also been sounding the alarm about smartphone-induced brain fatigue. Keiichi Amano, a neurosurgeon, says he's seen patients with similar symptoms these past few years. He says he calls the condition in which the brain has too much information, overflowing brain. In Germany and South Korea, some experts call it digital cognitive impairment. Professor Hyung Suk So of South Korea says research is needed to determine whether the irregularities caused by smartphone dependency are temporary or early signs of dementia. So the brain gets tired, but our brains also get tired when we're working or reading a book. What's the difference between that and looking at your smartphone? It's the sheer quantity of information. Our phones bring us huge amounts of data. It's intensely bright and has many colors, and we can use our phones while doing other things. I see what you mean. You can look at your smartphone while you're watching TV or fiddle with it while you're waiting for your computer to start. Also, once you're on your phone, you can use multiple apps at the same time. You look at or listen to or write about many things simultaneously. It seems like you're multitasking, but the brain is actually very bad at doing several things at once. Is it? Hmm, that's right. The brain wants to concentrate on one thing at a time, but when you multitask, it quickly switches from one task to another. This puts too much stress on your brain. I believe that's what causes smartphone-induced fatigue. I'd like to show you the smartphone-induced brain fatigue risk test that we mentioned earlier in the program. 
The first 10 boxes ask people about their smartphone habits. I encourage our viewers to take the test as well. In addition to the items we show, there are categories like, I take photos instead of notes, and I can't find new locations without my phone. Shinichi, you checked eight out of the 10 boxes. Let's look at the next 10. These are about memory and memory loss. For example, I'll forget why I walked into a room, or I can't remember what I did three days ago. There's one here that says, I couldn't name three topics in the news right now. I was shocked to see that you of all people checked this box. I know it's not good for a newscaster, but if I'm asked suddenly, I find it hard to remember. Well, people who multitask have a hard time sorting things out. Now let's take a look at the final 10 items. These are meant to check on physical and mental health. I always feel tired, both physically and mentally. I'm irritable and feel vulnerable. Shinichi, you checked I'm easily depressed. Are you okay? Well, honestly, I do feel down a lot. You know, things often don't work out the way you want. Shinichi checked 17 of the 30 items on the list. Dr. Okumura, who created the test, says people who check 20 or more are at high risk, and those with 10 or more are at medium risk. So Shinichi is medium risk. Well, medium bordering on high. But in Shinichi's results, most of the boxes ticked are on the first panel, which looks at behavioral patterns. That means a change in behavior will probably help refresh the brain. You mean I can change if I try? No, oh, I think so. Smartphones apparently threaten the brain. But data indicates that the impact is more serious on children. This shows the correlation between the results of math tests administered to a group of junior high school students and their smartphone usage. The students with the highest scores were those who didn't use smartphones at all or who used them less than an hour. The longer the usage, the lower their scores. You may think that's because they don't study as much, but the students all spent about the same amount of time studying. The brains of students who spend long hours on their smartphones had a significant amount of yellow areas. This is a sign that the development of white matter, which is where the nerve fibers linking the entire brain are concentrated, has slowed. I've never seen anything that affects such a wide area. I suspect the memory functions in children's brains are being negatively affected. I would recommend that children under the age of 18 be limited to using smartphones for less than an hour. Forcing them to give up their phones may be better for their futures. There is no academic consensus on limiting usage to less than an hour a day. But smartphone manufacturers are taking voluntary measures. They are installing functions to limit overuse. iPhones have screen time, and Android phones have what's called digital well-being. These features let users set limits on the time they can spend on certain apps. Once the limit is exceeded, the apps can't be opened for the rest of the day. If we don't use our phones for a certain period of time, will our brains return to normal? The brain has a trait called plasticity, which helps it retain changes. Even after something bad, if we gradually adjust our habits and keep doing good things, our brain will change for the better. Children's brains are said to be highly plastic, so I think they recover quickly. Shinichi was at medium risk on the smartphone dependence disorder test, and we did another test on his brain. We measured blood circulation in his frontal lobe while he did a simple quiz. This chart shows the results. Professor Etagawa, you found them surprising. Why? Well, frankly speaking, I suspect your brain wasn't working as much as expected. Really? Yes, if your brain had been highly active, the blood circulation would have increased sharply. It was supposed to rise. Honestly speaking, I was shocked to hear that. 
So I did a digital detox. It's when you put down your devices in order to reduce reliance on them. Some hotels and travel agencies now sell digital detox retreats and tours. Will the detox change our brain? Let's take a look at what I went through over the course of 40 hours at one of these retreats. You might think this is the start of a completely different program, but you're still watching today's close-up. I was pretty excited as I headed to my room. Hope you did well. The director told me not to put in too much effort. What a beautiful room. Oh, the window is so big. First of all, please give me your devices. I put my phones in a briefcase, which the hotel staff locked. Very strict. So absolutely no smartphones is a must. Yeah, but it's necessary for a digital detox. Enjoy your stay. The NHK crew left my room. And you're all alone. Eight cameras monitored my every move. What do you think of this? Was I really on a digital detox? Maybe not. I was thinking about what to do. I realized I felt for my phone no matter what when I had free time. Many people tend to do that if they have time to kill. I brought my guitar as a substitute. You're a good player. Thank you. But I can't play that many songs. I soon got bored. So I decided to read a book. Not an e-book, an actual book. So you started reading. I bought the book a while ago. I apologize to the author. Put the book aside. Yes, I'm afraid I didn't feel like reading. I couldn't do anything. I think it was a symptom of withdrawal. Really? Smartphones constantly stimulate the brain. Once you get used to it, you want that sensation all the time. I had absolutely nothing to do. I just wandered around in frustration. In the end, I went to bed. It's a good idea. <laughs> Outdoor activities are very good. If we're in a natural environment, the brain's healing hormones start to increase. I really recommend that people move their bodies without using their brains. It's really good. The bonfires are also good. The flames are relaxing. It's the flickering. Sounds and lights are in what is known as the fluctuation state. Experts say if something around us is in such a state, we tend to unwind more easily and the default mode network is prone to be turned on. You don't usually look like this. A blank stare. Yeah, but it's good. You look great. And look at the stars. I lay down to watch them. Ah, it looks so cozy. It's rare I get to look up at the night sky. Time. 
time is not there to be filled with tasks. It's just there to be felt as it passes by. Let the beautiful lights become etched in my mind. That is all I need to do. So I ended up composing a poem. But it came out naturally, didn't it? Yes, I started thinking it's okay to do nothing in particular. The next morning, I saw a bird perched on a faraway tree, so I decided to take a close look. You must have seen lots of birds during your daily life, but they were just background information you really weren't aware of. Now you've started to notice. The trip taught me just how hardwired we are to fill our time by doing something. We feel a need to fill any spare time with tasks. After a night's sleep, I stared out of the window, looking at the scenery and thinking, not a bad way to live, it's okay to be idle, hooray for an idle life. You've certainly learned a lot. But what about the results? We tested Shinichi's frontal lobe blood flow after detox and asked Professor Edagawa to analyze the results. Since it's private information, Shinichi, you take a look first. I think it looks good. It says signs of recovery and brain function, but it falls below expectations. Are the cameras to blame? What should I make of this? Well, I expected the line to soar to the right compared to before the detox, but the result fell short. It's flat. You must have felt the presence of the eight cameras. You were constantly being watched. This may have prevented you from fully refreshing your brain functions. Our director kept reminding me that the assignment was to rest my brain. But how could I, with eight cameras and with the crew coming in my room at night and around dawn to change the memory device? The noise they made woke me up every time. I couldn't really sleep. So you couldn't relax? Well, your brain couldn't. Given the conditions, I think I did pretty well. What do you think? I agree. Good job. You don't have to go to a resort for a digital detox. There are things you can do in your daily life, such as not taking your phone into the bath, toilet, or bedroom. I do all of those things. It's not a good habit. You should also refrain from using your phone while eating and talking, and engage in simple tasks like dishwashing to keep your mind blank. Go for walks, enjoy the sun, appreciate the seasons. So there are many ways to detox. Still, everyone has a smartphone these days, since they're basically essential to our lives. What's the best way to live with these devices? Right. Well, our viewers might end up thinking they should quit smartphones altogether. But that's not the answer. The point is, don't let yourself be used by your smartphone. Don't let yourself be used? Yes, when your smartphone beeps to alert you about a new email or a message on social media, don't you find yourself rushing to check immediately? That means you're under your phone's command. You should instead consciously set rules so you're the one in control. Try becoming a smart user of smartphones. This way, you can limit the negative effects without going to such great lengths as a digital detox. Thank you very much.